Hello gorgeous peeps, welcome to another episode of Techspert Weekly where this week you join me here in gorgeous Hawaii for the Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit and I'm rocking a bucket hat as you might have noticed, like it's 1996 all over again. Kind of feel like I should be twirling some glow sticks and smashing a huge amount of acid. And yes, it is obnoxiously red, but not quite as obnoxiously red as my actual scalp from being in the sunshine for more than five milliseconds. And yes, got the uh, the old floral wreath thing around my neck as well. It's, it is actually a thing everywhere you go. They bung one of these over your head. I swear to God, if you got arrested in Hawaii, the cops would chuck one on you before they bunged you in the bloody cell. I also got handed a lovely set of beads as well. Thankfully, not of the anal variety. Quite nice, although not the most comfortable to wear when you've got less meat on your shoulders than the average McDonald's chicken nugget. And actually, they're probably going to f*** up my mic anyway, so let's just get all of that off. So I've been here in Hawaii for a few days now. I actually got here about 24 hours before the Qualcomm lot did, which unfortunately meant I had to sub my own food and drink for that first day. And when I saw the price of a pint at the hotel bar, I made the ungodly decision to go sober for an entire evening. And I'll tell you, my body had absolutely no idea at all what was going on. My liver was f***ing loving it though. The little prick was doing cartwheels in there. Overjoyed at having a night off for the first time since 1992. Don't worry though, I've absolutely punished the wee bastard every night since then. With a good violent bit of free bar action. Last night was literally a piss up in a brewery. I thought I was actually dead and had somehow ended up in heaven. So hence today, your Uncle Spur is feeling a wee bit delicate, just a smidge. By delicate, I basically mean that it feels like Michael Beer's shooting a f***ing film inside of my skull. But it kind of feels like we've come full circle on this trip though, because last week I was absolutely smashed off my tits in the cold with MediaTek. And now this week with Qualcomm, I'm an absolute broken hungover mess, but at least in a nice warm place. And finally, the old shorts are more appropriate. Anyway, bloody hell, I've been banging on quite a bit. We've got loads of hot Qualcomm action to smash our way through. So let's do it. Getting jingly with it. Techspert Weekly. So this week I've been listening to a fair bit of sexually loaded microprocessor chat and now for your viewing pleasure I shall regurgitate some of the most arousing bits. Let's start with the geeky specky sh**. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 has been purpose built for AI across the board starting with the hexagon processor which has been redesigned with super efficient micro tile inferencing and a double sized tensor accelerator offering up to 4.35 times the AI performance versus the original 8 Gen 1. And if you happen to not be one of those nerdy types who knows all about microprocessor architecture, well just imagine a special edition episode of The Chase with Danny Dyer taking on one of those clever c**ts. In this case, Danny Dyer is the 8 Gen 1 and Captain Smug is the 8 Gen 2. That's the sort of gap that we're talking about here. One of the demos Qualcomm showed off was a live real-time translation of English into both Chinese and Spanish. Thus proving that us Brits being lazy twats and not bothering to learn other languages is 100% the correct approach. You ready for some more trouser rousing specs? The 8 Gen 2's upgraded cryo CPU boasts a super powered prime core and now has an extra performance core too. Four of the buggers running at 2.8 GHz and just three efficiency cores running at 2 GHz. I don't know about you, but I am already proper moist. Cameras! That Spectra ISP has also had a proper bit of spit and polish, so now your smartphone camera will be able to see the world in layers and adjust each layer in real time before you take a photo, similar to what we saw from MediaTek's Dimensity 9200. This identifies people, animals, plants, food, scenery, skies, etc. And it can then adjust the lighting and colors of each individual element to make it look even more lush. And it also shows you the results right there on the screen before you even hit the shutter button. The 8 Gen 2 can also do clever shiz like removing reflections from glasses, which, yeah, that's some proper smart or shenanigans. Fair play, Qualcomm boffins. Qualcomm also mentioned that the Sony IMX800 and IMX989 camera sensors have been fine-tuned for use with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for the likes of improved HDR video capture, which actually combines four frames into one so everything looks as natural as possible. And Qualcomm's also working with Samsung on a new ISOCELL HP3 200 megapixel image sensor, again optimized to work with the 8 Gen 2 to capture insanely detailed high-res pics with HDR support. Oof. And Qualcomm also revealed their Always Sensing Camera update. And this clever bit of tech can automatically identify when the camera is being pointed at a QR code, even when the camera app isn't active. And it can detect if someone's cheekily peeking over your shoulder when you're up to something a bit more private. And any information that the always sensing camera captures will remain on the chip. It won't be beamed out onto the interwebs. It can't be used by any other apps, so you don't have to worry about it from a privacy standpoint. I mean, not that it really matters anyway, because let's face it, the tech gods already know all of your really weird random perversions anyway. Yeah, even the thing about the Japanese chambermaids and those amusingly shaped kumquats. Next up, gaming. 
And if you like to unwind by killing the shit out of your friends or simulated beans on your humble smartphone, then good news. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 offers up lots of clever bollocks, including Vulkan 1.3 support, which allows for dynamic rendering. The big update here, though, is the real-time hardware accelerated ray tracing, which can produce softer, lifelike shadows, dynamic reflections, and so on, kind of similar to what MediaTek announced last week. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 also supports Unreal Engine 5 MetaHumans, so you can expect photorealistic people to pop up in your mobile games, ready for you to horrifically disembowel. It's as close as you'll possibly get to real-life murder. Hooray! Connectivity! The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 also features a fresh X70 modem, which supports two 5G SIMs working simultaneously, and you will get some Wi-Fi 7 support with high-band simultaneous multi-link support and speeds of up to 5.8 gigabits per second, with under 2 milliseconds latency. Ideal for a bit of online gaming or feasting your eyes on as many of those Japanese chambermaid videos as your sick little heart desires. Other sh**. Snapdragon sound has also been given a boot up the arse, so if you're using compatible headphones, which should be emerging from early 2023, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 can dish up some tasty dynamic spatial audio with low latency head tracking. Great use for gaming, so you can hear some sneaky wee school kid sh** bags sneaking up on you. And last up, Snapdragon Secure now also includes a next-generation face unlock with liveness detection, so criminal types can't surreptitiously manufacture an extremely lifelike 3D model of your face and use it to unlock your smartphone. Suck on that, bad guys. So that in a wee nutshell is all the most exciting bits of the Snapdragon Summit thus far. And in case you were wondering, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 flagship phones are expected from Tons of manufacturers including Sony, Oppo, Motorola, Xiaomi, Honor, Red Magic, Asus, OnePlus, bugger loads of them. And the first blows are expected to land by the end of 2022, so just in the next month or so. So anyway, there we have it. Now it is time for the part of the show that's even more painful than my sunburnt scalp. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. Actually, I might have to take this off because the top of my head is getting really hot. How the f*** did we ever wear these things while we were raving for like seven hours in a bloody basement somewhere? Whew. Oh, very moist. Right, anyway, let's kick off uh, this week with Theodore. Hello, Theodore, who says, I think Chris may need a new chipset. The current one is getting fried. Yeah, that's generally what happens when you douse them in alcohol, unfortunately. Uh, Yorkshire D says, get pissed, don't feel the cold. That's some good thinking, spurt lad. Uh, yeah, I guess that was a, a plan. Uh, certainly, yeah, it, it did help keep me warm when I was in super freaking freezing San Francisco. Although now that I'm in Hawaii, I don't really seem to have slowed down on the drinking front, to be honest. Uh, Aces Wolf says, glad to see the production quality continues its incremental downward spiral. Looking forward to a review from a bus stop and then eventually pissing yourself in the gutter for the iPhone 15 review. Oh I mean, yeah, to be honest, at this rate, I might be reporting from a nursing home in a couple of years. Jay Bayford says, F*** me, no more short shots. I've seen more meat on a sparrow's kneecap. Well, Jay, this one's for you, buddy. <laughs> Marion Rose says, seeing as you didn't get around to wearing lederhosen in Berlin, yeah, unfortunately, I'm really hoping you're going to be suitably attired in the gaudiest, most eye-pulverizing Hawaiian shirt. The thing is, right, I would be highly tempted to grab myself a Hawaiian shirt while here, just for the comedy value, if nothing else, but the only store around here that does them, it charges about like 50 freaking dollars. I'm sorry, my budget limit for a Hawaiian shirt would be about five. Uh, next up, Tiger May Fury says, pack more than one bottle of sunblock. Oh yeah, don't worry, I've been applying that shit with a paintbrush, especially since my scalp got rather tender. Factor 50 all the way, you know, this, this northern skin was not meant to be out in any kind of sunlight whatsoever. I'm essentially a freaking vampire. Uh, Darren Vaughn says, MacBook? Really? I, I know, right? I'm a goddamn philistine. I, the only thing I know how to edit on is Final Cut, as much as I f***ing detest it. But yeah, if it's any consolation, I usually spend at least half an hour of every single waking day just screaming vulgarities at this thing and threatening to kick its f***ing teeth in. Almighty slab of sheep sh**. Uh, Reno says, Uncle Spurt, what was your favourite all-time flagship smartphone? Uh, holy zombie Jesus, that is a tough one, definitely. I mean, some of the really iconic ones that sort of uh, leaped to mind from back in the day that I really enjoyed spending time with are the likes of the HTC One, the proper metal bad boy with the boom sound speakers, which were just absolutely freaking awesome. It's really great camera tech, really loved those phones. Uh, the likes of the Huawei P20 and the P30 when they really sorted out the camera tech and it was just a solid all-round experience right before they got absolutely done by America. The LG G2 was a massive fun of mine for a while as well. I, I used that for a good long uh, time. The likes of the Google Nexus phones as well. Really enjoyed a lot of those. 
There's just, there's just far too many to even contemplate, so I don't think I can narrow it down to, to just the one, to be honest. Uh, next one, oh, quite a long one. Josh Horsier says, appreciate the response to the phone count question. Can't even begin to fathom that kind of number of phones. Oh, so this is the number of phones I'd reviewed like in my lifetime, which was stretching up towards the thousand mark. However, without that effort, you wouldn't be flying around the world to booze fests and volcano-y, pop-worthy islands alike. Yeah, thankfully, no volcano action thus far while I've been here. Fingers crossed, I'll, I'll skip all right. Uh, keep it up and maybe your best mate Elon will get you to Mars to review his upcoming Tesla phone. I mean, to be honest, he might well shoot me into Mars using some sort of crazy space cannon. He seemed like the slightly vindictive kind of guy. Uh, certainly by the time this video goes live, he'll probably have sacked everyone from Twitter just for being more clever and correcting him constantly. Or maybe simply for being poor in his presence. And next up, David Pascoe says, Cracking a wee win for the lads last night, Chris. Neither wonder you hit the swally. Yes, finally a victory for Sunderland FC. Thank Christ, I was starting to get a little bit worried as we were hovering just above the relegation zone. But of course, it's typical that they finally found their form just as there's a massive f off break from football for like a month. From proper football anyway, not the World Cup bollocks. Uh, Somalia says, Loved all the drunken rambling. If the tech spurt channel is this fun, I can't wait to see what boo spurts would be like. I mean, I can tell you exactly what Boo Spurt would be like. It would literally be me sat there with a pint of something or other going, yeah, that's pretty good. Mm, yeah, I like that. Repeat until my jaw no longer functions and I'm basically just dribbling down my front. I did actually go to a proper beer launch for journalists once and it was really, really weird. I think it was like Goose Island where launching a new IPA or something like that. So we went along to a little brewery and all the actual beer journalists were there just like sipping the stuff. Like it was like a wine taste and just swilling it around and asking proper questions about IBU ratings and stuff like that. And meanwhile, me and the other tech guy who somehow managed to get an invite there were just at the bar, just propping it up, smashing back as much as possible before they kicked us out. Uh, Mike M says, kitten for the tech news, but I got booze news instead. And speaking of which, African Sunrise says, any beer recommendations? We need a beer review channel pronto. Well, this week I've mostly been drinking the local brew, which is uh, Maui Brewing, which is not too far away. That's the one that we, uh, oh, excuse me, moi. Oh, that did not taste nice. That's the one that we went to uh, last night for the literal pit up in a brewery, which was freaking awesome. One of my favorites is definitely the Big Swell IPA, mostly just because of the name, which is hilarious. And a few of those, and then things got a bit hazy, so I couldn't really tell you what else was good. But yeah, Big Swell all the way, baby. Uh, next up, Morto says, tech advice question alert. Oh, at least he gave me a warning. Would you rather get the Pixel 7 right now or wait for the Galaxy S23, which finally warns be using an Exynos chip here in Europe? It's kind of tough to say ahead of time before the S23 launches. Or kind of a part of it comes down to do you prefer the Google services or the Samsung shiz? But yeah, I'm assuming that the Samsung Galaxy S23 will be powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, uh, both here in the UK, well, here in the US and in the UK, which I'm not currently in. In which case, it should be superior for gaming, and of course, you get all those f***ing awesome features that I was just banging on about earlier. So yeah, hopefully, it should be a good one. It'll be interesting to see how much of this 8 Gen 2 tech actually gets implemented into the S23 and is usable. Uh, By Pinkerton says, I still use my BlackBerry Z10 for its baked in video maker. Gotta admit, I was not a fan of that Z10 with bloody BB10 OS. That thing crashed more than Richard Hammond. I seem to recall the battery life wasn't particularly good either, but then I, I, when did that phone come out? Like 2014 or something like that? I think, I think I might have still been at Mobile Choice for that one. That's how long ago that was. But um, fair play. It's good to hear that it's, it's holding up, apparently. Uh, Joseph Gornal says, Dear Chris, as much as we love you, and we do, you must cut down how often you slosh the booze down. Otherwise, who will inform us of all of the new trouser tingling tech developments? I mean, you know, the vast majority of these videos is essentially just me reading sh** off the internet while sloshed. You might as well just cut out the middleman entirely by grabbing yourself six or seven loggers and then just firing up tech radar. But thank you very much, Joseph, buddy. That's a very lovely comment indeed. Much love. You guys are far too freaking sweet. You really are. Uh, very lucky to have you guys commenting every week. And uh, speaking of which, please do smash some comments down below and we'll get our way through as many of those as possible next week when I'll be back in bloody rainy blighty again. And speaking of next week... This is about next week. So yeah, as I say, back in the UK next week, swapping sunburn for hypothermia. Hip hip hooray. That'll be the last time I see daylight until in February probably. And what is happening next week? Let's see if there's anything interesting going on. And that looks like bugger all. So yeah, after all the excitement of all the, the chipset shenanigans of the last couple of weeks, it's going to be a bit of a chill one. But I am hoping to finally bloody get my iPhone 14 Pro Max review 
on the go. What do I think of it? Ooh, is it worth the £1,200? What do you bloody think? But anyway, I don't want to spoil it. So yes, hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Sorry that the sound's probably a bit crap. It's a bit echoey and boomy in here and everything. I'll be back to the, the usual slightly better but still subpar audio next week. And yeah, have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Smash comments, poke, like, subscribe, notifications, bell thingy, and love you.